Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of July. We're going to have a look at the stars, we're going to see what kind of energy we can expect this month. If you already know your Sidereal Vedic rising moon and sun signs you can jump straight into your mini report otherwise if you'd like to stick around here and find out what is my interpretation of the energies for the month and i'm also going to cover a couple of little newsy bits then you can stick around also one of you asked what was the music that was at the beginning of last time's episode i will find the name of the artist and i'll put it on the screen i get all my music from epidemic sound so you can always hop on there to find the music and you can shazam a lot of the music should come up via shazam as well if you have that app on your phone i use that app that is like, I think, probably my most used app and only used app. I don't really spend too much time on my phone, uh, but I do like that app because you can just, you know, if you're, I don't know, you're shopping at H&M or you're in a cafe or something and you hear music, you got to find out what it is. I totally relate. All right, let's take a look at the energies for this month. What can we expect? You know, to just sum up this month in a really general and brief way, I think it's going to be a very easygoing sort of a month. I'm not seeing anything too hectic or discordant or challenging or any of that because we're going to have Mars stepping into Taurus. That's from the 13th of July onwards. And the Lord of Taurus, Venus, is going to be in Cancer. So this is pretty quiet sort of energy and for any of those of you who remember now I'm pretty sure I was supposed to check this I'm going to check this right now I'm pretty sure we had Venus retrograde last year in Cancer I'm just having a look at that now because I remember that yes there it is yep we did it was a quiet time so we've got a month that's going to be a little bit quiet like that quiet period we had last year and i'll tell you when that quiet period was that would have been about we're looking at july august um, perhaps even september that whole july august september last year was pretty quiet i do remember that and this time this year we are going to have now i'm just going to zoom up here get venus back on track now Venus is going to go through Cancer. We're not going to have any retrograde. We're not having any of that. So I would say for the whole month of July, yeah, look at that. It's kind of quiet uh, is what I'm seeing. Mars will cross the path of uh, Uranus. And that is, I'll tell you which day that is on. Because I, I mean, the only slightly challenging or difficult thing, I mean, that's sort of the 15th of July. 15th of July could be a little bit sudden change or something hectic, maybe a little bit on that day, but otherwise it's looking pretty quiet to me, guys. Uh, I've got here, this is a month not to put your foot on the accelerator. It's a good month to rest if you need to. It's a good month to be at home more if that appeals to you or sounds like something you might need because maybe you've had quite a busy year that's quite a possibility for some of you it's a good month for socializing it's a good month for being creative you know we're going to have three planets moving through cancer and cancer is the crab it's the shell it's you know we go within we don't want to uh, be doing too much at this time I've got here yeah this isn't a great month for action as I said, Mars will be in Taurus from 13 July, lauded by Venus, and Venus is in Cancer for the whole month. So actions won't yield much at this time. Yeah, I've got uh, three planets moving through Cancer, Sun, Mercury and Venus. So there is an emphasis on being at home more, being with family or being social. It's a good month to rest and recharge if that is what you need, guys. So that is all I have for the energies for this month. Uh, let's dip into, since I don't have too much to talk about, 
let's dip into some election news. There are a lot of elections going on and I thought I'd talk about the English election that is coming up on, I think now it's the 4th of July. Have I got that right? And I know that that is Independence Day in um, the United States, but here I want to call it Independence with a TS. I'll put it on the screen so that it's not confusing. You can see what I'm saying, but I think it's going to be the day of the independent candidate. I think that this election here in England, I think, I hope and think a lot of people are going to vote for independent candidates. Uh, I, I think that I won't be voting actually, which is unusual of me. I've got that written on my screen even that I'm not voting in this year's election. I don't think I will be because I have tried to find who is my local independent candidate. Uh, I'll, I'll do a bit more searching but I, I'm really getting the feeling that they will just give my vote to one of the major parties and I just don't want to participate because I don't like either of the major parties. I feel like there is no one to vote for. I think a lot of English people are feeling this way. I think that what I've, when, when I've gone on different news sources and like on YouTube and read the comments, I'm basically reading a lot of English people are saying, these are two wings of the same bird. We don't want this bird. We don't want the wings. We don't want any of it. That's where a lot of people are. Um, but because I do sidereal Vedic astrology and I've got some numerology handwritten notes in front of me, I will tell you what I see. And what I'm seeing here from an astrology point of view, purely astrological, and what, I mean, this is quite good because I'm not voting. I could vote, but I'm not voting. So you can see I've got nothing invested in this at all. I'm purely reading the stars and I'm kind of just curious myself to see how this is going to pan out from a star point of view. Uh, but if we take a look at Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer is in a number one year. That's really, really strong. Just that alone is very, very helpful for Keir Starmer. He's also got Saturn 6 from Moon. So it's a platform building time for him. Uh, this is, you know, he's got natal Jupiter um, here as well. Uh, so this is a, a, a big time of a platform building time for him where something new can really happen here for him. Uh, so I am seeing that six from the moon. And then his Saturn is interestingly, oh, also Rahu was interesting to me as well. Rahu is six from ascendant. Uh, that's really strong there in Keir Starmer's chart because that's, he can overcome enemies at this time. Okay, so on two fronts, that's quite strong for him. Saturn is then going to go into being six from his ascendant. So again, this is quite strong. As I say, he's running a number one year. So I really do think that his stars are very strong. Uh, and it's really interesting to take a look at Rishi Sunak. Let's have a look at him. He's running a number seven year. This is not good. And we've just seen that with Narendra Modi. I will come on to him in a moment. Don't you worry. We're going to talk about him in a moment. But um, Rishi Sunak is also running a seven year. That is not promising if you are going in for an election. That's not promising at all from the numerology. If we have a look at what's happening for Rishi Sunak in terms of his chart, I'm going to have a look at, well, again, I'm going to look at uh, Saturn and Rahu. Could Jupiter be helping him out? Yeah, I'm sort of having a look at that now as well. But what I see here is this is these are not good conditions for him. Uh, Saturn is 8th from Ascendant and 12th from the Moon. Okay, on both counts, Saturn is not strongly placed. And yeah, I'm just, I mean, I'm going to say that Keir Starmer clearly has the stronger stars of the two main contenders. All right. Uh, but I, as I say, I'm not voting for either. I have no interest in, in this election. It's, it's, 
yeah, it's hard for me because I've voted in every election, but in this country, you can not vote. I won't be fined. So, um, yeah, I, I won't be voting. Uh, it's, it's that simple. I just can't I, because I feel like they're both warmongering people who are just doing the bidding of people higher than them. So I, I don't want to participate in this. I also feel that way about the American election, even though I don't live there and can't vote there. But I, f I feel that way about the American election too. What, what, are, what are Americans going to do when it's your time? I mean, I guess we'll take a look at the astrology <clears throat> closer to the time and see what's going on. But uh, I can tell you here, not a lot of people are inspired to vote. If I had a really good independent candidate that I knew I could trust, someone like Rachel Elno, I'll put her name on the screen. <clears throat> and um, if you're in, I'm pretty sure she's in Derbyshire. Have I got that right? I hope so. But like, there are some really good independent candidates that people can vote for. I do think it's going to be uh, you know, the, the results are either going to show more people aren't voting. So I think that is going to become apparent. And I think independent candidates can do really well in this English election because I, yeah, as I say, when I read the comments on YouTube, that's the kind of feeling that I'm getting that people are not happy with either. Uh, I mentioned Narendra Modi. Let's just dip into that news very briefly. All right, I don't want to talk too much about this. And could I just please say that if you're going to talk about uh, Indian politics, please can we be polite to each other? Okay, so I'm not being, you know, insulting or rude or mean to anybody. I'm just stating an opinion. And if you would like to state an opinion in the comments below, could you please not be insulting, mean, nasty. I know I've had, and when I've talked a little bit about Narendra Modi, I've had a lot of people unsubscribe. You can unsubscribe if it's, you know, if it's really something you can't tolerate, but uh, we, we should be able to chat, I think, you know, and, and all I want to say here is that uh, he was also in a seven year, like Rishi Sunak is, Okay, and we can see, now if you have a look at this headline here, we've got here, you know, why India's, India's Modi failed to win outright majority. The results are a personal blow to Mr. Modi who has never fallen short of a majority. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, I've been consistent in my messaging. I have said that it's not a good year for him. He has won, okay, so that is true, but he really is going to have to uh, perform brilliantly if he wants to keep his position because I'm sure there'll be some young gun in BJP or some shark who wants to take his place. So he is going to have to, uh, you know, I suppose do some restoration work or, or something like this if he wants to stay. I also want to share with you this headline uh, just so that you can see the headline here. I won't go too much into the content of this article, but it says here why Modi's BJP was defeated in Ayodhya where they built a grand temple to Lord Ram. Again, I had said that, uh, now my exact statement I think was something like, uh, Ram Mandir will be the beginning of the end for Narendra Modi. This result confirms what I had said. I had said this many months ago and a lot of people told me you don't know what you're talking about, you're not in India, you can't talk about it, you're only looking at Western media which is false. Uh, the first time I talked about any of this I mentioned the Indian sources that I have watched. I talked about Karan Thapa. I'll put his name on the screen. I talked about The Wire as well. I'll put that on the screen as well. Uh, Kate Mahadasha, let's just touch on this very briefly because Kate Middleton has been seen. And I just wanted to say that I think that has really been a boost 
to this country. I think it made people so happy on Saturday. Uh, you know, and I remember it was raining and yeah, I've never gone to one of these things. I could have caught a train and gone in and been part of the crowd or whatever. I didn't do that. I just um, was here and well, I did a bit of shopping in the rain. That, that was interesting. But uh, yeah, she's been out and about. And what I wanted to share with you is for you to take a look at the letter that she did. Now she, she released a beautiful photo. I'll put the photo by my side. She's, she's standing in the woods. It's a lovely photo. It's a real photo. It's not manipulated and doctored and all that controversial stuff. Um, mind you, some of that controversial, mysterious stuff, of that photo and all that, that's very key to Mahadasha. It's very, you know, mystery. We don't know what's going on. Is this a real photo? Is this, so this is all Dasha Sandhi. This is all we're, we're witnessing Dasha Sandhi on the world stage uh, with Kate Middleton. And if you have a look at the letter that she wrote, and I'll just pick out a couple of interesting little lines in here because this letter is, is just, it's demonstrating Kate Mahadasha. She says, um, uh, she talks about the bad days and she talks about the good days. All right, if you're in a Keita Mahadasha, you're gonna have you're gonna have good days and bad days. She's written about that right here. She's also written <clears throat> this, which I thought was, was really amazing. She says, I'm learning how to be patient, especially with uncertainty. Yes, it's Keita Mahadasha. And it's gonna start for her in July, I'm pretty sure. She says, taking each day as it comes, listening to my body and allowing myself to take this much needed time to heal. Those two lines right there, that is an excellent description of Keita Mahadasha. And those of you who've gone through that, you know that it can really be a challenging time. So I think that's all I've got for the news here today. Let me just make sure I've covered everything. I think that's everything. Um, yeah. All right, well, I think we'll get into the mini readings. Anyone who wants to stick around and watch these, you can join me. Uh, we're going to take a look at, we're going to start with Aries. Aries, welcome Aries. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon or Aries Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, we've got Mars in Taurus in your second house. Now, Venus, which is the Lord of Taurus, will be in Cancer with Sun and Mercury in your fourth house. So what I'm seeing here is that there's just an emphasis on being at home, being with the family more. Uh, this isn't the time to be putting your foot on the accelerator. OK, so if you want to have a bit of an easy month, if you want to just change the pace, that would be a good idea. I've got here, if you have energy and want to do something, then you could organize your accounts or organize your finances or get on top of your admin, something along those lines. Your spending could possibly be higher across this time. OK, so that's just something to watch out for. Uh, and it could be higher because you're attending to your home. Maybe you're getting some repairs done or fixing something or catching up with something. You could be going out more. You could be going out with family. You could be socializing more. So all that costs a bit more too. Now on the 5th of July, there is a new moon in Gemini, Purnavasu Nakshatra in your third house. So this is a really lovely time to plant seeds for travel or healing in friendships. And we've got a full moon, 21st July, in Capricorn, Uttra Ashada Nakshatra, happening in your 10th house. So this is Uttra Ashada Nakshatra. This is the lonely nakshatra. And this is a good time to contemplate how you have been, if you have been in your life at times, or if you have felt this, we all have, but have you ever felt like you're a lone wolf? You know, and, and this is in the context of your work. You can kind of reflect on, OK, where have you been a lone wolf at your workplace or in work or in your career? Or where, where is that 
area, and, and this is career related, but it's something about you've had to do it all on your own. So this is a time to just reflect on that, feel the fullness of that. There could be a culmination here. There could be something closing out here. So, you know, if, if you want to collaborate and work with people, maybe that's coming up in your future. Maybe this is the end of you being a lone wolf in your workspace. So it's all that kind of thing happening there on the 21st of July. But Aries, it's, it's looking like quite a nice month, quite a homely sort of a month ahead for you. So I hope that sounds good. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon or Taurus Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, Mars is going to be in Taurus in your first house. And the Lord of Taurus is Venus. Venus will be in Cancer with Sun and Mercury in your third house. So this is really wonderful energy to be social. Okay, it's a good month to hang out with your friends, do a little trip here and there if you can. Uh, if you don't want to do too much this month, Taurus, that's a good idea. Okay, we all need a restful month. We all need a catch-up month. We all need that kind of energy. So I've got here, yeah, nourish yourself and don't overwork this month. On the 5th of July, we have a new moon in Gemini, Purnova Sunakshatra, happening in your second house. So plant seeds for big wealth to grow in your life. Yeah, definitely. Second house is the big money. It's the big savings. So plant some seeds, Taurus, to have some big money accumulate for you. And you're going to have that kind of accumulation happen really March 2025 onwards. That's going to start to, to grow and happen more and more. Now, 21st July, we've got a full moon, Capricorn, Uttara, Ashada, Nakshatra, happening in your ninth house. So Uttara, Ashada, Nakshatra is the lonely Nakshatra. It's where we feel alone sometimes. So you might be reflecting on where you have felt alone. Uh, and this could be perhaps where you felt alone in your relationship with your father or, and or siblings. Uh, it could be highlighted by that but equally you know you can reflect on how this has made you stronger and independent because you've had to do it on your own uh, you know so this this could be a time of reflection you could be closing out cycles here to do with loneliness and you know you could be closing out that chapter because you know you're going to have more people come in for you so that is something there Taurus, it's looking like a good month ahead for you. We are going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, Mars will be in Taurus in your 12th house. Now, the Lord of Taurus is Venus. Venus will be transiting through Cancer along with Sun and Mercury in your second house. So what I'm seeing here is that you have got some really nice energy to grow spiritually, have some more mindful meditation. Just if you can somehow incorporate more little bits of time out in your days across July that would be a good thing for you so for example let's say you are working in a company and you're there every day and it's busy 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 well somehow are you able to just take a 10 minute walk outside here and there now and then I used to do that when I was I remember when I was working in technology actually in Sydney and I just used to sometimes disappear now and then. <laughs> so I can say that now because this was a very long time ago. And uh, I used to just disappear now and then. I just have a little 10 minute walk. I just go around the harbour and I'll have a little walk, get some sun, get a little, I don't know, a little drink or something. And yeah, I used to just do these little disappearing acts and nobody would notice and nobody would mind. So if you can try and do that this month. Uh, that would be ideal because you've got this 12th house, Mars in 12th house sort of energy. So we've got Mars, which is action and movement, but then we've got 12th house, which is escaping, right? So you're kind of escaping. I don't know, you're going for little walks here and there. 
But if you can, if you can turn this into a month where it's just like a lot of mindful meditation, a lot of yoga, a lot of nourishing yourself with nutritious home cooking, if you can do that this month, that, that would be a really good thing. Now I've got here Rahu is in your 10th house and Saturn is in your 9th. So work could be demanding uh, energy from you. It's true. You might be busy at work. Yeah, because I did think about, you know, when I was... In, especially I, uh, when I worked at Accenture, this was a long time ago, but I honestly, I would just disappear in now and then. And it was uh, so 10 minutes. You're allowed. You're allowed to go to the bathroom. I mean, you know, <laughs> you're allowed. So, but I do remember what it was like. I remember, gosh, at Accenture, I'll just tell you this one very quickly. I, we used to work at Guinness UDV and we were doing this marketing project. Anyway, my boss was right next to me. His laptop was right next to mine. And sometimes I used to just disappear into my personal email just because I wanted to just check, you know. And my boss one time, he looked at my screen and he goes, no, no, no. And I'm like, are you for real? You just, I can't check a personal email. And he was like, no, we don't have that kind of time. They were, you could imagine, I did not enjoy working there. Uh, so I know what that is like, but I, it, look, if you can, if you're in some kind of very hectic work environment, Try to, try to take some time out here, Gemini. But some of you, as I say, some of you will be able to just convert this into a month where you are doing more. If you're quite in charge of your time, uh, you know, you work for yourself, you're self-employed, any of that, or you're looking for work, you might be looking for work, in which case, let's have a look at this. Well, I would still say the same. If you can turn this into a very restful month, because it's quite amazing. The opportunities come in when we're well rested. You know, and they say inspiration comes to a mind that is well rested. You, if you can rest this month, it would be good. All right, 5th July, new moon. Gemini Purna Vasunakshatra, first house. This is a good time for you, Gemini. This is your new moon. You can plant seeds for renewed growth in any area of your life that, that needs growth. You know, um, plant, plant a seed for anything you wish. It's a bit of a wild card new moon here. This is your new moon. Uh, now we've got here 21st July full moon. So that's Capricorn Uttara Shadha Nakshatra happening in your eighth house. So this is a good time to reflect on your intuition or any occult gifts, skills, abilities that you might use. Um, but definitely just your intuition. Reflect on your intuition and how it has always saved you, how it has always been right, how you know at the depth of your being what to do. <laughs> you really do. You really do know. You don't need uh, any outside external person to tell you anything, actually. And, you know, these, having these reports and little bits of guidance like this, that's all well and good. And you can use ingredients from here as you build your life. But ultimately, your intuition is superb. And that's something that you can reflect on on the 21st July full moon. You could be closing out something to do with your intuition and you could be opening up a new cycle. So um, also watch out for guidance and downloads on this day. Gemini, thank you so much. For tuning in we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome thank you so much for joining this is cancer ascendant cancer moon or cancer sun as per the sidereal vedic system of astrology so from the 13th of july mars will be in taurus in your 11th house now venus which lords taurus is going to be moving through cancer with the sun and mercury in your first house so this is actually quite good energy for you for work interestingly uh, but what kind of work specifically well it's for getting opportunities it's for getting new clients it's for growing your social media platforms maybe you're going to be very popular on social media this month I've got here you will be lit up you will be seen you can profit at this time I've got here use law of attraction and I've got here this isn't so much about working hard this is about being magnetic okay so we've got mars lauded by venus so this is not about actions this is about the feminine using the feminine energy to draw the abundance to you the clients to you whatever it is that you need yeah i've got here see what you can draw to you this month now it's the fifth july new moon 
uh, Gemini Puna Vasu Nakshatra. It's happening in your 12th house. So this is the new moon to plant seeds for spiritual growth, that your intuitive gifts and powers be expanded, that you feel more connected to the all is one. And on the 21st of July, we have a full moon in Capricorn Uttarasha, the nakshatra in your seventh house. So this is a really good time to reflect on how strong you are on your own, okay, regardless of a partner. And this could be, you might be closing out a cycle of independence, of being strong on your own, you know, um, but equally it's a good time to just reflect on how you are strong on your own because you are and you would have demonstrated that to yourself very often across life. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in, Cancer. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, Mars will be in Taurus in your 10th house. Now Venus, which lords Taurus, will be in Cancer along with the Sun and Mercury in your 12th house. I've got here, you might feel like having fun and escaping from it all, but there is actually good energy here for you to power ahead work-wise this month. Okay, so this is a month to work well and lay the groundwork across July and August for September. Okay, you're going to have a really good transit in September for work. So, but you're, there's something about you laying the groundwork now. And I've got here, yeah, you're going to achieve excellent results work-wise in September, but you're laying some kind of foundation at the moment. I've got here, balance life out with rest. This is a good month to rest and recharge. I have been saying that to all signs, but you've actually got some good energy here to be working and to be busy. Yeah, I've got here this month and next month are important to lay the groundwork. Uh, now on the 5th of July, we have a new moon in Gemini Punarvasu Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So you can be planting seeds for abundance, for any hopes, dreams and wishes to be fulfilled. And of course, you know, Punarvasu is lauded by Jupiter, so expansion, dream big. Leo, plant some seeds for abundance, definitely. And on the 21st of July, we have a full moon in Capricorn Uttarasha, the nakshatra, in your sixth house. So this is the lonely nakshatra, Uttarasha, and it's a good time to reflect on how strong you are, how you can handle anything that comes your way on your own. How have you done that in life? You know, you would have done that. And this is a good full moon to kind of recognize how far you've come to see that you really are strong on your own and that you really have achieved a lot on your own. Leo, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, Mars will be in Taurus in your ninth house. And Taurus, as we know, is lauded by Venus. <coughs> And Venus is going to be in Cancer with Sun and Mercury in your 11th house. So this is actually a really good month for networking, for skilling up, for learning, and a bit of socializing as well if you have the time. I've got here, you might be networking and you might find a new guru or a mentor or someone you'd like to learn something new from. And I've got here, this isn't the best time to push ahead with something. This is really a time where you want to relax and go with the flow. Okay, so if things aren't moving in the direction you want it to, just don't push anything. Just relax, just go with the flow this month. Okay, you're going to have better, more productive transits later on. As I say, it's good for networking, skilling up. A bit of socializing, but yeah, networking, finding a new guru. All right, 5th of July, we've got a new moon in Gemini Punarvasu Nakshatra happening in your 10th house. So this is a good time to plant seeds for your dream career. What would you really love to do? I've got here, yeah, what would you love to be paid to do? 
and that is the ultimate okay so if you're paid to do something you love you will never work a day in your life so are you at that place you might already be there but if you're not wish for that and on the 21st of July we've got a full moon in Capricorn Uttara Shadha Nakshatra happening in your fifth house so this is a good time to reflect on how creative you are when you are on your own this is Uttara Shadha the lonely nakshatra so when it comes to your creativity how have you been creative in the past but it's it's just you it's just you it's just the downloads come to you and then you create something or when, when it's you on your own when it's you in the universe how have you been creative in the past and this is just a time on the full moon to reflect on that uh, and to to recognize how incredibly creative you are Virgo I want to thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Libra ascendant Libra moon or Libra sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so from the 13th of July Mars will be in Taurus in your eighth house Venus will be in Cancer along with Sun and Mercury in your tenth house Venus of course lords Taurus so that's why I'm factoring in uh, the fact that Venus in particular will be in Cancer let's have a look here I've got here yeah you might not feel like working at all this month however your glittery social planets Venus Mercury and Sun are all in the 10th house okay so this is kind of interesting you might not feel like working and that's because of Mars being in Taurus in your eighth you might just be like "Ugh, I just want to stop I just don't want to do anything you know but then you got all these beautiful energies in the 10th so I've got here there could be some social things connected with work okay um, social possibilities with work friends or you know uh, something along those lines I've got here you can be seen at work this month um, this is good energy if you're on social media but if you need rest take the rest okay prioritize the rest uh, you just might need to chill out and not do too much and that would be just fine Mars is there in Taurus in your eighth house might be time to stop for a bit uh, we've got 5th July new moon Gemini Purnavasu Nakshatra this is happening in your ninth house so you can plant seeds for what you would love to learn next in life and that could be anything you know um, it's, it's very much about learning skilling up what would you love to learn what would you love to know and it doesn't have to be anything work related this is Gemini this could be um, it's just pure hobbies you know stuff that you want to learn to do for fun and on the 21st of July we've got a full moon in Capricorn Uttara Ashada Nakshatra happening in your fourth house so this is a good time to reflect on how you have matured spiritually and how you've learnt over time how you've learnt to nurture yourself okay it's a, it's a good full moon of recognition that you know what I have grown a lot and something could culminate uh, in the area of home for you or in your relationship with your mother or how you nurture yourself any of that but equally in those times of culmination it's good to just look back and say wow I actually did a lot on my own it's Uttarashada the lonely nakshatra what did, what did you achieve on your own it's a good time to reflect on that Libra I want to thank you so much for tuning in we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Scorpio ascendant Scorpio moon or Scorpio sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so from the 13th of July Mars will be in Taurus in your seventh house now Taurus of course is ruled by Venus Venus will be moving through Cancer with Sun and Mercury in your ninth house so how I'm reading this is that there could be yeah there could be some tension in your partnership this month with your romantic partner the person you're committed to the person you're married to I've got here equally you might not be motivated work-wise as well 
Uh, this is a good month though to socialize with friends, siblings or cousins, uh, and or it could even be work friends as well. Uh, and it's a good time to learn new things that will help you achieve more in the future. Now on the 5th of July, we've got a new moon in Gemini Purnava Sunakshatra happening in your eighth house. So you might be planting seeds for more of your occult gifts and talents to crack open. Okay. Um, yeah, just wanting that to happen or saying, hey universe, I'm ready. Show me what's new. That's what, um, oh, what's that lady? What's her name? Pat Rodegast. Pat Rodegast did that. She was just in her kitchen one day and she just finished drying the dishes or something. And she just sort of thought, what's next? Like in a very genuine way, like I've got nothing challenging me. I, I don't know what's going on. What's next? And then I think soon after her just kind of genuinely saying to the universe, what's next for me? This um, gift of channeling cracked open for her. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, so you might have a moment like that where you're just like, okay, what's next? I'm, I'm genuinely ready for something new. Now on the 21st of July, there's a full moon in Capricorn Uttara Shadha Nakshatra happening in your third house. So it's a good time to reflect on how you yourself on your own have got yourself through the tough times. Okay, so this is a full moon of recognition. This is a full moon of achievement. This is a full moon of, hey, look, look at yourself and look at, hey, I've done this. I did it. No one else helped me. If it wasn't for me, this whole thing wouldn't be here or whatever it is, right? Look at that in your life. There'll be something uh, that you have done all on your own. It's a time of, of recognition for that. Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome... We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, Mars will be in Taurus in your sixth house. Venus, which lords Mars, will be in Cancer along with Sun and Mercury in your eighth house. This is quite interesting. Venus and Mars are going to be in Vipreet Raj Yog. Okay, so some interesting energy here for you. Uh, I've got here, it's a good month for work. There could be some challenge at your work though, with a client or with competition or something that's come in and I don't know, maybe, maybe it destabilizes you a little bit or something. But I've got here, if you face it with courage, you will succeed, okay? You've got the winning stars here. And I've got here, if you're feeling tired, or you're not motivated to work, it is really good for you to spend time at home with the family this month. And I've got here, you can power ahead at work if you have the energy, but if you're not feeling it, don't push it. Okay, um, yeah, if you need a bit of a restful month, this is a good month to factor in some more rest. Now on the 5th of July, there's a new moon in Gemini Purnavasu Nakshatra happening in your seventh house. So you can plant seeds for healing in your heart space, uh, healing for you and your partner. You know, you could plant seeds to meet someone special in your life as well. And on the 21st of July, there's a full moon in Capricorn Uttarashadha Nakshatra happening in your second house. So it's a good time to reflect on how you and how you alone have created and generated wealth for yourself. It's a good full moon to recognize how far you've come. It's a bit of an achievement energy here, a recognition, you looking back going, do you know what? I am quite strong actually, and I have done all this stuff and I did it on my own. It's that kind of energy that's happening on that full moon there. You could be closing out a cycle here. Uh, and it could be to do with wealth and you know maybe you're more collaborative in the future or things change a bit could be like that but things are looking pretty good here on the whole Sagittarius I want to thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Capricorn 
Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July onwards, Mars is going to be in Taurus in your fifth house. The Lord of Taurus, Venus, will be in Cancer along with Sun and Mercury in your seventh house. So this is quite interesting, Capricorn. I do think the focus here is going to be on your romantic partner uh, and or your children at this time. I've got here, take care in all these relationships and be careful how you speak with these connections. Okay, uh, you've got Mars, let's have a look here, in the fifth. Mars in the fifth can be um, quite a bit of a boss actually and can be um, like, you could be, you could be more aggressive or something uh, than usual or in a rush or but don't do that right try to not do that with either your romantic partner or your kids you might be in a rush for something but um you might not be equally this might not apply to you at all but i'm just trying to read the energy here uh mars in the fifth can be you know um a bit of an army commander type thing can happen Let's have a look here. I've got here, this could also be to do with co-workers as well. Yeah, you don't want to rush your co-workers or your staff or your employees or any of that. I've got here, yeah, this is a month to just go easy on people. Schedule in some breaks or fun social outings this month. The above little warning I gave, that doesn't apply to everyone. It'll just be a few people there, I think. But ultimately, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice month for um, breaks, social things. You know, don't, if, if you need a bit of a rest month, this is the month to schedule that in. Okay, this is, this is the month to just go, oh, thank God, I've got a month where I don't have to, you know, push it or try. Or yeah, if you want to relax a bit or um, change the pace, this is the month to do that. I've got here 5th July, new moon. Gemini, Punarva, Sunakshatra. This is happening in your sixth house. So you can plant seeds for business success, uh, for more clients, or the ability to compete more effectively in the marketplace. And on the 21st of July, there's a full moon in Capricorn, Uttarashada, Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. Oh, wow, this is your full moon, Capricorn. My goodness, this is a huge one. Capricorn, this is the full moon to reflect on how strong you are on your own this is a bit of a pat yourself on the back i've done it i'm good feel if you get to feel good about yourself hopefully on this day or definitely reflect on that or look for that this is like an achievement full moon this is like a you know you looking back going i did that and every now and then we have to do that. We just have to stop and look back. You know, we've climbed the mountain and it's good. It really is good to stop and look. I've got here, you are a powerhouse. Yeah, and the thing that I always remember is in Sydney, when I walked to catch the bus, I got this hill. It's really small. It probably takes 10 minutes to do it, but I'm exhausted by the time I get to the top. But sometimes when I'm like three quarters of the way up, I just kind of turn around and then look down and I think, well, I walked all of that. And I feel very proud of myself and it motivates me to get to the top. So it's that kind of full moon that you've got going out here. I, we don't have any, let's see, I'm in England now. There's no hill like that. No, there's nothing like that here. It's all pretty flat. Yeah, it's in Sydney, that is quite a bit of a hill to get to the bus. So it's, it's about 10, 15 minutes. It's not even that long. <laughs> but yeah, it's... um. That is the one spot where I, I turn around and I look down and I go, I can do it. <laughs> All right, Capricorn, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, we're going to have Mars in Taurus and that's happening in your fourth house. Now the Lord of Taurus, Venus, is going to be in Cancer with Sun and Mercury in your sixth house. So I've got here, this is not the best month for love or romance, okay? Uh, you might be at home more. You might not 
be motivated to work as much. I've got here, it can be a good month to take a short trip somewhere if you are feeling cabin fever at home. So if you're getting a bit restless, you might want to take a little trip. I've got here, you might get lots of new ideas to build your business. So that's sun moving through cancer. That's from approximately 15 July to 15 August. You might get a lot of new ideas. So uh, try to note those down. Okay. And that, that, that could be, uh, I will just check on that one. I've got you right here, Aquarius. Let's bring that up, Aquarius moon. I would have said that because I want to have a look at 15 July as well. Okay, right, that's sun moving through. Yeah, uh, that, this is what I wanted to check because I wanted to say they're strategic ideas. So it's not like you're necessarily, it is. This is strategic type of ideas for your business or for your career or for your future. These kind of ideas could be coming through 15 July to 15th August. So yeah, and the month of July, if you don't, if you don't want to do as much, you can sort of make this to be a bit of a restful month. We're going to have better energy later. Uh, now, 5th July, new moon. Let's have a look at you actually. When, where, where's your Mars? Oh yeah, yeah, no, you will have. I'll tell you, I'll tell you just in advance. Mars in Cancer, when's that going to be good for you? Oh, this could be October, could be a really productive month for you. Oh, wow, and there's a retrograde as well. Mars is retrograding. Okay, good to know. Anyway, you got a little preview there. We've got a Mars retrograde coming up, Aquarius. How about that? Uh, we all do, indeed. So, But that could be productive for you, I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, you get a bit of extra bonus news. No one else got that. 5th July. There's a new moon in Gemini Punerva Nakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So you can definitely plant seeds for creative ideas. Yeah, it's a time of ideas for you, Aquarius. Um, plant seeds for your creativity, for new ideas, for downloads, for guidance, to be shown, to be shown some of the map. Ah, the future map preview by your higher self. Got it. Yeah, see, we just had that because I, I've, I've not spoken about Mars retrograde for anybody. I do, it wasn't even on my radar. We've got, look at that. So you're doing some real future stuff, Aquarius, because I tell you when, I'll, look, I'll go back to it now. Yeah, it's sort of October I'm seeing for you. I think October, November, December is going to be, we're going to have the yeah retrograde around that time. It's October, Mars retrograde. No, retrograde's in December. Okay. But October, November, December, that could be quite uh, significant for you work-wise. You might be quite busy. Interesting. Okay. Future stuff. Please tell me in the comments, maybe around that time, if um, any of this comes true. Uh, so I've gone through the yeah, 5th of July, new moon. It's very much about creativity. You could wish to have a child as well, plant seeds to have a child if you want to expand your family. You could wish for new love in your life, to meet a romantic partner. And on the 21st of July, we've got a, a full moon happening in Capricorn Uttarasha, the nakshatra, in your 12th house. So it's a great time to reflect on how well you yourself connect with the all is one. Okay, so no, nobody in between, no middle person, no reader, nothing of that. You don't need anyone else. Just how do you connect with the all is one? You do connect with the all is one directly. And on this full moon, it's good to reflect on that and to recognize, hey, I can do it. I can do it all on my own. Aquarius, I want to thank you so much for joining. I want to thank you Aquarians out there. You brought me a little preview for what's coming up in the future. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So from the 13th of July, Mars will be in Taurus in your third house. Venus will be in Cancer. Venus, of course, Lord's Taurus. Uh, Venus will be in Cancer with Sun and Mercury in your fifth house. So, oh, this is lovely energy, Pisces. I'm so happy for you. This is great energy for socializing, 
especially a great month for romance or being creative or having fun with your children. I've got here, if you have energy and enthusiasm for your work, there is great energy here for that too. All right, so you've just got everything, Pisces, basically. This is a beautiful month. You can construct this as it suits you. Okay, so really listen to your intuition. Uh, but this is the kind of month I've got here, yeah, prioritize fun and being social if you can. And that's one of the things I have actually been doing. I have been building in a little bit more meditation into my days. So I have been doing like 15 minutes first thing in the morning, which has been really good. <clears throat> but what I am doing as well is I'm just, because we've got good weather here in England and we've got some sun now, Apologies, Pisces. I'll just cut that out. I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. That's interesting. This hasn't happened for a really long time. I don't know if there's any Pisces that need a bit of throat chakra clearing. Mind you, that has been happening a little bit through this video. So I don't know. It's probably just me. But what I was saying was that um, we've been having sunny days here in England. And so what I have been doing is I have been prioritizing uh, I've got here, yeah, prioritize fun and being social if you can. One of the things I've been doing is prioritizing me. Like I've been going to the park and I just take, I do take my phone and I'll just set the insight timer for 15 minutes and I just enjoy listening to the birds, looking at the sky, looking at the flowers, looking at everything. It's like an open eyes meditation where I'm just being, but I'm in the park. And what I'm finding is that because you'd think to walk up to the park and then to sit down and then to have your 15 minutes and then to walk back home. All of that takes time. When you add it up, it ends up being maybe a good, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes, something like that. And so I think to myself, oh, I don't have 45 minutes. If, if I think to myself, I don't have 45 minutes, then my day is not going well like my my day is cluttered i'm not explaining this very well am i okay uh so they say they say if you think you don't have 45 minutes for meditation then you really need to do the meditation and it's true because what i'm finding is that the more i just nip out and do something like that the more time i get in my day it's so incredible it's kind of like if I don't do the meditation, the time somehow slips through my fingers. But if I do do the meditation, I'm way more effective, way more productive. I'll have more output, more things that I've achieved and done and stuff like that. Yeah, no, we need to build in more meditation into the day. If you can, Pisces, uh, build some more meditation into your day, you'll see it will give you time. So it's like you spend 45 minutes but then you, you do kind of gain uh, even potentially a few more hours. So yesterday, because I went to the park in the afternoon, I finished everything early and I even finished dinner early and I was like, oh my gosh, I, could, I actually had time and energy to, like if I wanted to do some sewing or do something, you know, I had time. I ended up just sitting on the couch and watching Dr. David Hawkins, which was great. Uh, but yeah, I could have done something with that chunk of time as well. So I'm definitely going to, yes, I'm going to do my 15 minutes in the morning, but I'm now going to make time to do another 15 minutes at the park or whatever, you know. And if that costs me 45 minutes, I'm going to spend it. <laughs> Like to, as in 45 minutes to walk up to the park and then to find my place to sit down and then to walk back, which ultimately it does end up taking about 45 minutes. But yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? When we experiment with, um, with time, can we buy time? Yeah. So when I spend that 45 minutes, it's like I, yesterday I had two hours. It felt like I had two spare hours uh, in the evening after I'd finished my dinner. Because everything just, I was refreshed and everything just flowed really easily. And I, you know, got dinner done. I did the dishes and it, oh, it was just amazing. Anyway, I'm sorry if someone might have needed that. Uh, it was a bit messy. All right, 5th July, there's a new moon. 
Gemini, Purna Vasu Nakshatra, happening in your fourth house. I've got here, you could plant seeds to upgrade some aspect of your home or to manifest that dream home that you've always wanted. And on the 21st of July, we've got a full moon in Capricorn, Uttara Shadha Nakshatra, happening in your 11th house. So this is a great time to reflect on how you have made the difference in all the big opportunities you've ever landed. Uh, I've got here, what did you do? This is a time to look back, to reflect, and to congratulate yourself, to say, do you know what? I can do it on my own, and I've done it before, and I'm gonna do it again. Pisces, you've got beautiful energy here across the month of uh, July. Really nice, because you, you can choose. You can choose how you want to spend your time, how you wanna spend your energy. I'm not going to dip into the Sati Sati thing. I did um, last time. I think I point up this way. Do I point this way or is it this way? You can have a look at your uh, Saturn report if you missed it. I do have a bit of Sati Sati style motivation there. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.